And um, I do want to tell you when we pray, boy, do we need to pray for the people in Syria. Amen. And the Kurds that uh, the illustrious idiot in the White House, God forgive me, but there, I'm not going to say it any other way. That's what it is. Has given the Turkish uh, government now license to murder and to destroy. Folks, I'm going to tell you, I've, I've been watching and following online, and some of the things I've seen are horrific, absolutely horrific. Not only are the Turkish armies coming in, but there are also various Arab militias that are coming after Kurds now because the Americans are no longer there. And these people are looking to wipe the Kurds off the face of the earth. The Kurdish people are similar to the Palestinian people in that they uh, derive their name from a portion of land that they come from. You know, a certain set of mountains in uh, the region of Iran, Iraq, Turkey. It's not just one country. It actually covers several countries. And these countries have all basically claimed a part of these folks' homeland, you know, the land that they claim to be their own homeland. And um, it's kind of like what happened with Israel and the Palestinians, you know. The Palestinians occupied the Palestinian uh, territory, and of course the Jews came in back in the late 40s after World War II to reestablish Israel and uh, the Palestinians lost what had been their land. I mean, and this is a fact, it's, it's true. And uh, it is now Israel, but it was occupied and lived in for many, many centuries by Palestinian people. Well, the Kurds in many ways are similar to the Palestinians in that regard. And uh, they've been fighting so that they could occupy and live in their homeland. They could live where they had always lived for centuries. And uh, we've got a demon in Washington who decided that America does not have to stand with its allies. And we do not have to, you know, we've got 2,000 soldiers. And now of all the places in the world for this dingling, to decide, oh, you know, we need to get out of all these various wars. And there was no war. That's the whole issue. The presence of the Americans with the Kurds helped to prevent war. That was the whole thing, okay? And pulling our men back has just unleashed a torrent of violence on these people. And they're not, we're not talking about a bunch of soldiers dying, we're talking about children dying, we're talking about uh, citizens dying, women dying, families being destroyed and displaced. Hundreds of thousands of people are now um, seeking refuge. And we know how Mr. Trump feels about refugees. Why, bless God, they can go screw themselves and die. You're having trouble in your country? Well, go to hell. We don't care about you. Don't come to our country. So what does he expect all these people to do? You know, where are they supposed to go now? Into Iran? Into Iraq? Oh, it's okay for other countries. And I'll bet you a million dollars he'll be calling for other countries to take these refugees in. But he doesn't want to take refugees into America who are coming, you know, from troubled places filled with violence and war and death and destruction. Anyway, I'm so disgusted with this whole situation, as you can tell. I am so disgusted. When you see a video online of a young Kurdish man being shot dead by a bunch of Arab uh, militia people, and then having the Arab man stand there and say, well, one less pig. Well, there's one more pig dead. That's how they look at these people. Can you imagine? And this would not be happening if America had not withdrawn from that area. 
if we had honored our commitments as we always have. And I'm going to say this on, on, our, on our broadcast. If one idiot, idiot, ever says a word to me about the way Barack Obama handled anything internationally, I swear to God I'm going to knock their teeth down their throat. I can't take it. Don't tell me anything about Benghazi. Don't even mention the word Benghazi. Hillary Clinton sat through 11 hours of testimony before Congress while the Republicans ran her through the ringer. Because legally, constitutionally, they, they had the right of oversight, you know? They had the right to do it. Whether them doing it or not was right is a different ball of wax. But there are a lot of things that are perfectly legal and perfectly right that can be done. Doesn't mean they should be done. But they can be, and they're legal. Now we've got a demon who's dividing our country and driving us towards civil war because he's claiming that there is an impeachment inquiry which is illegal and improper and blah, blah, blah. Baloney! Baloney! It is legal, you idiot! There is nothing improper about it. You may not like it. You may have trouble with it. It may bother you. That doesn't make it one iota less perfectly legal and legitimate. That's right. And I'm sick and tired of hearing this devil get up and divide this country the way he's dividing this country. And then watch all the peons at his rallies. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You know, he's not right, you dingbats. If you knew anything about our Constitution, if you knew anything about how our government works, you would know he is full of garbage. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm fed up with it. I'm so fed up with it, I can't see. I'm so tired of the lies and the misrepresentations and, you know, the... And I'm going to tell you, I get as upset, listen, I'm going to tell you, I get as upset about Democrats pulling this crap as I do Republicans pulling it. And no matter which party has the upper hand, they're always playing that game back and forth. And it ticks me off when the Democrats do it. So don't sit here and act like, well, Pastor Charles is only saying that because... Trump's in office, baloney. If you read, go back and read my posts over the last many years on Facebook. I guarantee you, you'll see that if there's anything that this preacher and this Christian embraces, it is the philosophy that fair is fair. What's good for the goose, as the old saying goes, is good for the gander. And so, you know, I, I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, when the Democrats do it, it's okay, but when the Republicans do it, it's not okay. But by the same token, the Republicans don't have the right to say, when we do it, it's okay, and when the Democrats do it, it's not. You, do you follow my line of logic there? I get tired of all that stupidity. And people in our country who do not know how our government works and how our Constitution is framed, they believe this crap every single time. Every single time. It doesn't matter who's saying it, Democrat or Republican. If you don't know how things work, you buy into it. Yeah, they're right. This is illegal. This shouldn't be done. No. No. But you know what? You didn't see Bill Clinton trying to drive us into a civil war when the Republicans were after him trying to impeach him for having oral sex with a woman in the White House. Yes, I said it. And lying about it. They couldn't impeach him. He could have sex with every woman in the country in the White House. There ain't nothing illegal about that. No, they wanted to impeach him because he lied about it. 
Now we got a man who can't get up in the morning and tell you what color the sky is without lying. And oh, that's all well and good. Every word comes off his lips is a lie, is deceitful, is untruthful. That's all well and good. But we were going to impeach a man because he lied about a sexual encounter in the Oval Office. And this man that we have now is literally, literally, folks, look at the way. Did you see video of his last, uh, what do you call it, rally? He's trying to whip people up into a violent frenzy. He is dividing this nation. I used to think Nancy Pelosi loved our country, but she doesn't love our country. She hates our country. What a horrible, bloody, stupid thing to say. And you might as well say, somebody out there who's crazy, who doesn't have all his marbles together, go shoot her. That's what he's saying. There was somebody out there who didn't have too many scruples who went after President Reagan, and there wasn't some bloody stupid idiot in the White House calling for violence. And he still went after Ronald Reagan and shot him and nearly killed him. Am I telling the truth? You better watch what you say, because every word that comes out of your mouth is hitting the ears of people who are unbalanced, people who have all kind of weird and whacked out political ideas and people who have all kinds of violent tendencies. I'm a pastor. I've been preaching for a lot of years. I've pastored churches, had a whole lot more people than we've got here today. And do you know when I get up in the pulpit to preach, I'm aware of the fact that in as small an audience as I've got, I've got people who aren't going to hear one word I say right. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now we got a nut in the White House who speaks to an international audience, not just a national audience, international audience. Millions of people every bloody stupid time he opens his mouth and says things that is literally putting a price on people's heads. Yep. The danger level is climbing by the day, folks. You know why he's pushing for, I didn't mean to go into all this today, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you. You know why he's pushing for Congress to take a vote on impeachment? <laughs> because that is the line in the sand that the violent people have drawn. And at Congress impeaches Trump, we're going to start getting violent. We're going to start attacking liberals. We're going to start killing politicians. That's why Trump is pushing for them to take a vote on impeachment. Because he knows the minute he is impeached, there's going to be violent outbreaks in this country. You just watch and see if I'm telling the truth. If I'm lying, I'm dying. You just watch and see. That's why he's pushing the way he's pushing. All right, let's let's get to God and leave all that garbage alone.